Hi, I am Javier Orozco and I will speak to you now about the renewable energy and how to integrate these renewable energies for the future of more sustainable cities. Here you have the different possibilities of uh, renewables which are day by day growing in energy production and in peak availability. Uh, the growth from 2015 until today is really tremendous. But the biggest problem is that we need to store this energy in order to make it completely usable and to make it to the biggest profit. In the 19th century, the carbon era, we simply use fuel for a primary source of energy. From the 20th century, we are progressively using more and more energy and distributing with a, 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 a alternate current a network, which uh, means that we have to produce at the same time that uh, we are using the energy. However, we need uh, to overcome this problem by creating a new network that distributes first the production of renewable energy and second that allows to store it at different times in order to make uh, the availability fully uh, relevant for us, for our uses. How to make it possible? First, we have uh, possibilities to work at private building level. We can generate energy and store at the same time in the facades, in the roofs, and also through the windows. Also in the different city elements which are part of our urbanism, in parks, parkings, street furniture, and finally with uh, elements which are part of the public services, like roofs or green walls. All these possibilities are adding both functionalities which are key for making a renewable energy usable and uh, an important factor which will eliminate the use of carbon fuel. In the small green concert, uh, concept we have first uh, the need to manage producers and consumers. For that, we have to fulfill both roles at the same time, like uh, the concept of prosumer, we're producing and consuming. We are uh, also achieving a complete monitoring of the network by smart meters, which will allow to measure how we are producing, how we are using the energy, and then we have to create a smart grids with virtual power plants, microgrids and different cells, which are interconnected for solving all the demand problems that can arise at different energy. So this uh, connectivity is first a small distributed generation with complete monitoring and second and third point and last point storing energy in the appropriate places to avoid misuse of energy. Uh, the microgrid typology uh, has to control technical elements like voltage, voltage type, distribution, island uh, operation, multi-master operation, all these technologies are to be completely developed in order to overcome the limitations of the typical grid that we have uh, until now. This has to be distributed and uh, managed at a micro level. Second, we have to uh, develop our electric storage, storage capacity. Uh, we have to overcome the uh, terabyte uh, our storage cap cap capability and at the same time store thermal energy for avoiding the use of ele electricity for smaller media. The availability is distributed and presented here in the different graphs but it has to grow on the hand of supercapacitor that is one of the uh, most rapidly developing technology based on nanomaterials and is completely uh, neutral to the atmosphere and to the environment. Second, we have to uh, interconnect uh, with transmission and distribution the customer services to the generation, which is first conventional, a baseline will always be needed, that's unavoidable, but also increasing the participation of renewable, gener in, uh, renewable generation by a, a careful control and management of the different customer services which are presented here. Due to the high diversity of technology, uh, the storage is one of the key elements at all levels and in different places so that for a later consumption we are also close from uh, the source to the use. If we can uh, introduce new technologies, you have here the main storage capabilities, 
the supercapacitors in a range that are perfect for small distributed storage elements which can be interconnected in the network can also serve as uh, storing elements for the electric vehicles which will later will be interconnected and used for storage when the vehicles are not in use. Uh, the state-of-the-art uh, distribution of the different technologies is presented here and as you see at customer service level that is where we can manage things uh, first uh, and is most desirable. The electrochemical storage, the thermal storage are uh, possible and we have to increase the chemical participation by use the use of supercapacitors. In the end, uh, in private buildings we will use at a certain level batteries, capacitors or supercapacitor and even compressed air because that's cheap and easily uh, available. Supercapacitors are also important in the city elements, also with thermal storage, especially when the uh, cold climates are present and uh, we, you can avoid a lot of energy consumption using directly heat which is a byproduct of electric generation and in public uh, services we can uh, extend more uh, sophisticated like technology like hydrogen and flywheels for a greater background. And this is all that I wanted to introduce about the use of microgrids and the future of renewable energies within the smart cities. Thank you.